Please stay close to me. No man ought to tell another man what he's got to live for or what he's got to die for. I don't have the patience of five or six deserters hiding out in a swamp. You ready? This is a really important piece of American history. It's such a powerful story. It's something that hasn't been told before. I was like, wow, that's incredible. How have I not heard about it? escaped slaves and poor white farmers uniting together for a rebellion in the Civil War. Usually these stories are very black and white, that the North fought to free the slaves and, and the South was fighting to, to hold on to slavery and chattel slavery. Every man's a man. If you can walk on two legs, you're a man. Right. Farmers in the South were poor, poor white men and they had no vested interest in the war, and they were opposed to slavery and opposed to the slavocracy. They were fighting a rich man's war, and that bit of information isn't something that we were aware of. For instance, if you had 20 slaves, your eldest child did, or you didn't have to fight in the war. If you had 40 slaves, then your eldest son didn't have to fight. a lot of these poor farmers didn't even make economic or whether someone was racist or not. This man, Newt Knight, had such a clear identity of what was right and what was wrong. But these folks got plantations from here to the Mississippi. I know, they're rich. So what? Are we gonna start killing rich people? It's why they're rich, Ward. Don't you understand? You, me, all of us. We're all out there dying so they can stay rich. Have someone like Newt who evolved and developed into being more of an activist. Took everything out the smokehouse. And then he taxed, they just ate it. He couldn't live with seeing somebody with an injustice or seeing somebody uh, um, not being treated fairly. <sighs> well, what do we have here? They gonna shoot me? All they gotta do is go like that. Last time I checked, the gun don't care who's pulling the trigger. Damn be the consequences. He never worried about the consequences. Never, he may have considered them, but he would never not right or wrong on behalf of the consequences being too tough. Didn't matter. Didn't matter how small the task. Don't. Don't go telling me what a man has to do, all right? Why? Why you always gotta fight everyone else's fight for them? He ends up in the swamps and is taken in by this group of runaway slaves, and basically led by Moses. They take him in. He must be pretty brave, then. He almost tastes like we do. Moses offers his bed, says, I'll sleep on the ground. You know, and, and, and he's like, what the heck's that about? <laughs> um, I, I just got here. How come they're handling you? Because I lay out. Deserted. How come? No, it ain't my fight, you know. Don't own no slave. I ain't gonna die so they can get rich selling their cotton. Mm -hmm. That's why we left, too. <laughs> <laughs> Newt sees the collar around Moses' neck, and it's just, he wakes up one night, and he's just like, well, we, that's not right. No man should have that around his neck. You know, let me let me get that off of you. Come ready. You ready? There were creating their own, you know, free state. I mean, that was so inspiring, so pioneering for the time. We declare the land north of the Pascagoula Swamps, south of Enterprise, and east of the Pearl River to the Alabama border to be a free state of Jones. Yeah. Well, they're very much allies, and 
And I think they have their, and, and beyond allies, their brothers. They form a certain sort of bond and trust with each other. And it's very unspoken trust. They don't have to go, they don't go pat each other on the back and go, thanks for today, but they fight alongside each other. We see their relationship, we see them get, get closer as, as the, the narrative pushes on. I don't miss this, so he's out there. ancestors did, you know what I'm right, saying? So this right. is a really important moment for us, even as actors and everybody contributing and doing this, all right? All right, all right. Y'all got it? All right, all right. Somehow, some way, at some time, everybody is just somebody else's nigger. Mr. Moses, are you a nigger? No, I'm not. Then what are you? Free man, Captain. Why's that? Because you cannot own a child of God. This movie isn't just in the Civil War period. It's how Newt Knight kept fighting for the rights of African Americans all through the post-war era, um, fighting, fighting white supremacist organizations, and um, standing up for the rights of freedmen all through Reconstruction. They start very early on in this journey of, of trying to kind of create a better society, a society where people can move a little bit, a little bit more freely. Okay, we're all sound. What Delta take to We like Republican tickets. Mm, we ain't got those yet. <laughs> <laughs> Just the Democrat tickets. We wait. I think for me being a Brit and, you know, uh, not uh, necessarily studying the Civil War at school, you know, I had a, a it was starting at square one. Put your left leg out, get brace for it. Mm -hmm. Right in there, you go look right down this barrel. You see that little BB on the end? Yeah. Uh -huh. Whatever's at the end of this BB, that's what you're aiming at, that's what you're gonna hit. All right. You'd like to load it. This relationship between Newt and, and Rachel, you know, how they fell in love, they had a baby, they lived on the same farm together. The fact that he deeded her 160 acres of land, which made her, you know, one of the only, or one of the few landowning women, probably one of the only landowning women of color of the period. You got to leave too. Why? Because the winds are shifting. Well, I don't care. And you can't fight it this time. Where we gonna go, hmm? To where? So-so. So-so. You sell this place, we could buy all the so-so. You don't grow water. Can't get nothing in the ground up there. You grew crops in a swamp. Yeah. I think you can coax a little corn out of so-so. Gary Ross, the writer-director, had been working on this project for over 10 years. This rebellion existed, many of which are letters from Confederate soldiers talking about it, right? It's not, I don't think this is really a judgment call. There was a rebellion, there was a night company. They did raise a flag over the courthouse in Ellisville. This example of Southern Unionism, of a rebellion within the Confederacy, wasn't just isolated to Jones County. There were other examples of it through the South. Um, the fact that there were mixed race rebellions that occurred through the South, that there were slave rebellions that occurred, led me into an area of study which almost on its own became interesting to me. He had access to, you know, incredibly uh, established and, and highly esteemed professors at Harvard, you know, that I was able to speak to. I read a book by Stephen Holland called A Nation Under Our Feet, uh, The Free State of Jones along with other pictures and like music that is closer to that time. So there are several things that I kind of, kind of dug up to kind of give me a sense 
of the character, a sense of the world around me. Shooting in that location, um, especially when we were out in the remote swamps, it's very easy to believe you are back in time. There's no evidence of modern life around you. It's trees and wildlife. Fact. Fight. Fact. 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 Sounds like a F Y T E. Fight. Fight. So you got a G right there. Mm, but it's a silent G. I also went to Mississippi and I went to Jones County itself, uh, visited Ellisville, uh, visited the grave site of Newt and, and Rachel, where they're buried in the same graveyard, very close to each other. Being on set and the makeup and costume, like all those things end up informing you as well. John Brown's body lies a moment in the grave. John Brown's body lies a moldering in the grave. John Brown's body lies a moldering in the grave. John Brown's body lies a moldering in the grave. John Brown's body lies a moldering in the grave. His truth is marching on. He's going to be a soldier in the army of the Lord. He's going to be a soldier in the army of the Lord. Saw a piece of lost history here that was incredibly important and, and should be a part of our history, and everyone should know about it. He's so passionate and, you know, really into the history, you know, he's done such detailed research. And he said the best way to share that as a filmmaker and writer is to write that script and make that film. That was a fascinating period of study. I was simultaneously learning about Newton Knight in Jones County and the internal struggles that went on of unionism and of this rebellion of yeoman farmers. At the same time, I was trying to get a broader understanding of the era and what was involved. He's created this website where everything is like noted, where you can find out historically exactly what happened. The impassioned director, one who was all about empowering his actors and kind of creating a, a very healthy tension and collaboration, so giving you space to push back when something doesn't feel like it's working for you. He's funny, and he's he's sort of, um, I guess, like a maverick. You know, he he, he, he knows his, his own mind. He's got, you know, his own ideas. He's all about kind of creating an environment where the story can be told to, with the greatest with the greatest degree of truth. I mean, he's, he's a force of nature, a bit like Newt himself. Let's go. <laughs> What I came to realize was how much of the history had been rewritten, how much of the history had been hidden, how much of a mythology that the Confederacy was consolidated just wasn't true. It's an important time in our history, something that hasn't been told before. It's unique uh, in, in that we are not familiar with the story. It deserves to be shared. For me, it was, it was, it was such an inspiring story about the struggle for freedom and, and really how freedom has to be demanded. It's not just granted. There's one quote that Gary said early on always stuck with me is that there was a guy that once his bell was rung, he couldn't unring it. And his bell wasn't unrung. He, he didn't unring his bell even after he was buried. His bell kept ringing through his descendants, through his, his son and his grandsons, um, the where he was buried, the defiance, um, the clear understanding of humanity that the guy, the man had. This life's for our children and their children's children. From this day forward, we declare the land north of Pascagoula Swamp to be a free state of Jones. They're poor farmers, deserters, who, frankly, sir, don't have much to lose. The winds are shifting. You can't fight with this guy.